Okay, so I'll be working on a new project today. This is a O2 Toyota Highlander with the V6. And uh, that engine looks familiar to me. That's a 3.0 V6, same one that you see in the Toyota Camry, the Toyota Solaro, and the Toyota Sienna. Also, it's the same engine size as my 95 4Runner out there. We're going to be changing valve cover gaskets, and the car has a check engine light, and we checked out its uh, P0330, and that's a knock sensor. So... That's gonna be tonight's project. So, first will be um, knock sensors and we'll tackle the valve cover gaskets. So here's the parts. There's the, this is the valve cover gaskets. There's, there's two of them in there. And then here's, your, here's the two knock sensors and this is what the knock sensor looks like. So we're gonna be, uh, I'll be replacing these two valve, valve cover gaskets in knock sensor. So hopefully it's not gonna be too bad of a job. I don't think it will. Just need, need some practice and that's all. So, yeah, wish me luck. Now I don't have the light on because currently I have it unplugged, so. What we're going to be doing is, um, I'm going to be obviously removing this thing. And in order to get to the val other valve cover gaskets, because this is a transversely mounted V6 engine, the easy one is over here, right, right underneath this cover. And to get to the one behind here, I had to take this manifold out. It sits, the other valve cover sits right underneath there. So take a, I'll just take off this manifold over here and, um, Take the throttle body and then to make it a whole lot easier take this upper intake uh, housing So the customer who owns this car says there's a lot of there was an oil leak coming from somewhere in this engine. So it looks like it's most likely coming from here. As I see, I know you guys can't see it, but there's a lot of wet stuff in there. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna be replacing this valve cover gasket, but I'm thinking I'm still considering I don't have to change the other valve cover gasket on this side. But just in case, once I take this manifold out, I I will be checking it. Uh, most likely the culprit is coming from here based on what I'm seeing here so if that one's still okay then we can just go with this one but you know sometimes go on the safe side but I'll just check just to make sure if the other one is still okay or not All right, a little short update on this O2 Highlander V6. Uh, we got this front valve cover gasket done, so we're, that's all good. Uh, whoever did a, whoever fixed, the last time who fixed this car on this car, uh, the last time whoever fixed this car last time before I did is, they did a really terrible job at it because the valve covers, I can loosen them with my own fingers. Like I can loosen, I can finger loosen it with my own hands. So they did not tighten this up, but this is the hardest part for me because uh, this is a, a front end, front wheel drive uh, laid out V6. So getting the bolts from the other part of the valve cover is gonna be a little bit of a pain. I have to go underneath the car and get them out, but so far we are making progress. Okay, the lighting here is not the best, but here I am underneath the car and uh, those are the other bolts that I'm trying to get out. Uh, 
Um, I parted from my arm being there, but that's one of those pointing right there. That's one of the bolts that I had to take out. So I can use a a little uh, ratchet wrench. To, it's in a shape of a of a open end wrench and get that thing out of there. So once I get that out, I'll be able to take take the valve cover out and replace that gasket. All right, another update so far. Valve cover, gus yeah, valve cover gaskets are now installed. Uh, one over there and the one over here. Now our next target is getting those knock sensors out. So I'm waiting for the coolant to be drained because um, the coolant needs uh, coolant, yeah, coolant drainage is required in order for me to get through here because uh, underneath this manifold and fuel rail assembly, there is a, a hose where the coolant will, will, goes through. And right underneath that hose is the knock sensors. I'll show you that once I get this thing removed out of the coolant's been drained. So there's a hose right under here. Once I remove this one, there's gonna be a hose. And then underneath the hose is going to be the knock sensors. So um, once the coolant is drained, I'll show you where it's at. at. All right, so um, we got this thing up, the main manifold. Uh, don't worry about that fuel rail, That's a, it's, it's okay. Uh, so right underneath, that's the hose I was talking about, and then right underneath is the, is the um, what do you call this, the knock sensors. So I'm gonna remove that harness so I can gain access to the, to the knock sensors. And like I said, whoever did a, do work on this car last time before I did. They did a really terrible job because that that pinkish orange red thing right there that looks like dry coolant to me because this hose right here is where coolant passes through. So whoever did that, whoever did this, did not do a good job at it. All right, I'll take this off. And then we'll then I'll gain access to the wiring the harness to the knock sensors. And there's one over here. It's going from these three cylinders and there's another one going from going behind here to these three cylinders I'm gonna start in inserting the intake manifold. I got the new sensors in, and um, it used a big bolt. Uh, had a big bolt on it, so um, I believe it was a uh, oh, it's this size. It was a um, 27 millimeter socket. So now that they're all installed, got the connections in. Now I'm just gonna put this main main uh, intake manifold and uh, this. Um, fuel rail on so here I go all right this is the second day of the replacing the knock sensors and those valve cover gaskets on this 2002 Toyota Highlander we're already re putting the engine back together so as you can see got those reinstalled uh, these things go will go last up when I put this thing on this is the intake manifold, or Toyota, um, in Toyota's terms, this is called a plenum. But, um, yeah. I have to go underneath the car to put this bracket, that, uh, hold down this bracket. So, once I put this thing on top of the car, I've got to go underneath the car to get this bolt uh, onto this bracket. Which, this is actually connected to the engine block, so. We are almost done. Whole engine assembly is now done. Uh, we're gonna top off with coolant. And then I'll do an oil change and then we'll take this back to the owner. All right, there's the oil change. Then we're gonna put some new 5W30 over there. So, then I'll take this car for a test drive and then give it back to the owner. Update on the uh, Toyota 
Highlander from 2002 with the 1MZ engine. I already put the scan tool in and it already, earlier in the video it said it was having a uh, check engine light which is off right now. Uh, I erased the codes but the co code was P0330 which was a engine knock sensor issue. So replace two, it was uh, mainly a cylinder bank number two, uh, I believe it was called, but I decided to just, since I'm there, just replace both of them. So new engine knock sensors are installed and I uh, erased the codes and so far there's no check engine light. So what I'm gonna do is test drive the car around the block and see what's going to happen.